All right. Well, here we are, virtual open week day four. So stoked that you could join me again today. And hello to those of you watching the replay. So welcome back. I'd love to hear in the chat. If you just find the chat box, the little chat bubble, what's your biggest takeaway so far? What has been your biggest takeaway so far? Um, and I'd love to know, after yesterday's session, did you do your council homework? So it was really easy just typing down in your internet browser the name of your council, um, low-risk home-based food business. Did you see the magic words that you were looking for, like home-based food business and low-risk and cakes without cream and biscuits? and jam so that's the kind of thing you want to be looking for on the council website as well you know um i did get asked this outside of the session yesterday about working in a commercial kitchen i actually interviewed somebody yesterday who has access to an rsl hall whenever she wants it's 400 meters from her house and all she's got to do is leave it clean and they're more than happy for her to use it so if that's a you know if, if a commercial kitchen if getting out of the house she can store all her ingredients there as well if getting out of the house is appealing to you, that's an option too. You know, we talk about being home-based, but it doesn't have to be. And did you do your customer homework? Did you think of three to five places that could be potential first stockists for your primal alternative business? So let me know in the chat or in the group. So today I've got butterflies. It's so exciting. We've got a primalist <laughs> panel. It's so cool. So I'd love to for you to ask your questions in the chat. So I've invited Rosie uh, Ash, who's here, and Geeta. Geeta's on her way, I believe. Um, Rosie sends her apologies. She's had um, a situation come up with her study. Uh, she's a very clever girl. She's doing some extra study. And then one of her lectures got swapped and she has to go to this, otherwise she's gonna fail her component. So she's put together a couple of videos for us that she's just done this morning and just literally, I've just downloaded them now. So I'm gonna share those from Rosie and she sends her apologies that she can't be here. She is in the Facebook group though. So if you have any direct questions for her, ask them in there. And you, she's also got a direct link that you can book in to have a chat with her direct. So does Ash, so does Geeta, they've all shared their links in the uh, Facebook group. I'll share them again uh, in tonight's email with a replay. So remember yesterday I said, I'm going to come up with a mega saving option for you. So stick around to the end to find out what that is. And I'm just feeling so generous this week. I just keep giving away door prizes every day. So stick around if you want to get a box of Primal Alternative goodies baked for you by one of our amazing Primalistas and shipped out to you. Stick around till the end. All right, so I've got a couple of questions um, from Regan and I think it was Ben who was Ellie. Do you remember yesterday I thought that we had an environmental health officer in the group and I pooed my pants? <laughs> well, uh, well, we didn't, so that was good. So um, we're going to come to those uh, questions in a minute, but what I'd love to do, we're going to start with Ash. I'm going to invite Ash on. Hang on. There she is. Let me just get a bit of a, hang on. Oh, I think if I, how do I do it if I wanted to? Yeah. What can you see on the screen, Ash? Can you see me and you? I can see me and you, yes. Good. Oh, that's handy. That's clever that, it, <laughs> that that's what, who I wanted to see. So the first question is, Ash, if you could think back to before you joined Primal Alternative, what problem were you trying to solve? So back before I joined, I basically, I was looking for something for myself. Like I was sort of in a place where I, I just really felt like I wanted to do something for myself. Um, and that involved obviously good food um, and working around my kids and my lifestyle. So basically I was just looking for something that sort of ticked all those boxes. Um, and I had been a serial stalker of Primal Alternative um, and I just kept going back to it. So just realised that I could work from home, um, you know, could work around the kids' schedules, um, bake at night if needed, um, and obviously the food aspect as well, just being able to provide good wholesome food for people. So that was my 
that's what I wanted to do really yeah awesome and can you tell us about what your major breakthroughs have been or what your major ahas have been since you started your business um so really like I starting a business is scary but having the the backup of you and the community as well um it's so lovely and because I have had a previous business oops and you know you don't have anyone to talk to when you're by yourself and you don't have anything to bounce off other people um and realizing that oh I actually do have a sisterhood there to chat to is like awesome you know you're not by yourself um which is really really lovely um and really realizing that I can actually do it with young kids as well um is like a really cool moment like this can happen I've got young kids can work around their schedule um and I can get it all done and love it too while I'm doing it <laughs> That's so awesome. So tell us a little bit, just a little side question here. Tell us a little bit about some of the stockists you've got on, because I know that you've you've managed to get into some really wicked uh, stores in Queensland. Tell us a little bit, give a shout out to some of your stockists and tell us how, how did you approach that and how did you get some of those really cool, you know, places to say yes, to take your order? Yeah, so a couple of the places, um, Canara Organic Marketplace. So they're connected to Flannery's, um, which is, I think it's Queensland and New South Wales at Flannery's. Are. I'm not sure if you've got them WA, but anyway. Um, so they're a couple of major ones. And I contacted Canara pretty much straight away when I became a Primal Lister because it was someone that I knew I wanted to get on board. And it took a while. There were lots of hoops to jump through. Um, and I just sort of I kept hounding them. <laughs> if they didn't get back to me, I just sent another email or I called and it just felt like, you know, Josh, the manager, he was busy and he's got, you know, so many other stockists and emails go missing. So I just sort of kept on their, kept on their email list and then finally got in the door. They said yes. And it's, um, it's been a really great hit. So really really good and then Flannery's is the sister store of Canara and then they saw how good it was selling so they wanted to get on board as well and yeah it's been really wonderful well done yeah really really cool so do you want to tell us a little bit about the the number of products that you bake for your stockists or how often do you bake for them how many stockists do you have do you do any markets do you or do you just have all stockists tell us a little bit about your um customer and income uh, portfolio okay so my they're mainly stockists so most of my um income comes from the wholesale side um so i've got roughly around five or six stockists um canara is the big one so they're ordering weekly to fortnightly orders um, and they can order up to 100 products um, so that was happening weekly. Um, it sort of quietened down a little bit. So it's sort of pushed back to the week and a half now. Um, and then another small, some smaller stockists as well that ordering weekly, that can be up to 20 products a week. Um, one orders every three weeks and that's probably like 30 products. So between all of them, it's, it keeps me busy weekly. Um, and then I do a market as well. So that's where I get um, the retail side of it. So I do that every third, every third Saturday of the month, um, which is nice as well. So that's um, just a small market, but roughly I've done, I think four now and around 600 to 700 for the day um, dollars. So pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. Like well for a done. day. Yeah. 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 Very good. And, you know, when uh, just a reminder that when you're selling, you know, it to direct to the customer, your gross profit is nearer the 70 percent versus, you know, um, when mm. you're selling at wholesale, which is a little bit less, but really good if you've got like it's a kind of like good to have a bit of both because it is really nice just to get that order in, bake it, drop it off, forget about it. And you don't have to yeah. stand there and sell <laughs> it yourself. So it's good to have a bit of a mix of the two. So just sort of in conclusion, Ash, how many products a week are you baking on average and how many days are you baking for or hours whatever is best for you to describe it 
Yeah. So roughly, I'd say probably around 100 products a week I am baking. Um, and I've sort of finally worked into a, a good routine now where before I was sort of getting an order and making sure it was fulfilled straight away. Um, but it was just sort of a bit making our family love, oh, I've got to, I've got to bake. But now I've put like boundaries in place, I guess you say, to my stockers, please order by this day um, and I will deliver it on this day. So my bake days are on Monday, Tuesday. I deliver on a Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, I've got a little one at home. And then Saturday, Sunday, my partner's home. So any other small deliveries that I get um, through retail customers, um, through my website, I can deliver on the weekends and sort of admins um, stuff on the weekend too. So all your stickers and making sure all of that's up to date as well. So, yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Ash. That's really helpful. Um, so a couple of questions uh, just in from Jackie, if I can get uh, one of the questions was, what accounting software do you use? Or like how, what sort I of admin systems do you have? Yeah, I don't have an accounting system at the moment. It's just me and my book work <laughs> and my computer Excel files. Um, I am looking into getting something because it, it would be a lot easier to even invoicing just so it sends it out and it reminds the stockist as well. Um, but that's just me at the moment. So I sort of, I prefer it that way to begin with, doing it myself and just, you know, the old school way, I guess you call it. Oh, well, yours, that's very <laughs> modern. Yeah, no, okay. Like when I did it, I just had one of those invoice books from the post office, you know, the blue ones, like <laughs> the carbon copy. Like that's that's old school, old school. That's what I used to do. And yeah, that worked fine because I didn't, I can't stand yeah. Excel. It makes me want to vomit. So you're like really, yeah. you're really high tech. So what about when you're like, do you, what about when you're at your market and stuff? Do you have a square or something like that that you use? I do, yeah. Yeah. They're cool. Yeah, so I've got a, a square reader. Um, and I've only just realized that, um, you know, it records and it gives all, all the data and all of that. So I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit useless when it comes to that sort of thing, but, um, yeah, no, the square reader, um, is great. So got I think you can I send invoices on there as well. Just quietly. I think I haven't done it myself, yeah. but I've heard other people do it. <laughs> Take, take well, there you people. go. I'll have to look into it. Look into yeah. that. And Jackie also says, what, what would you say your most uh, popular product is? For some reason, it is all the low carb on the Sunshine Coast. So like the fat and seedy bread, fat and seedy pizza bases, um, the no nut hemp bread. They're my go-tos like for customers coming to me personally and also stockists. They get the most low carb options. Yeah, so it must just be a thing on the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> And, and everywhere else. I think it's pretty, they're pretty popular. Yeah, true. Uh, but it's, especially yeah. in Victoria as well. Yeah, there's a lot of keto, keto loco people in, in Victoria as well. So um, my next question for you, Ash, is how, how have you changed since you became a primalista? How have I changed? Um, I guess I have more confidence in myself. Um, I remember, you know, the first few days, well, first few weeks of, looking around, looking for stockists and then actually having to go in and speak to them, very nerve wracking for me. That wasn't, you know, my strength, um, but realising that I can actually do it. So that confidence boost um, as well. And yeah, just feeling like this, the, yeah, the fulfilment of having all these amazing products, even just being able to speak to people at the markets, because um, most of my um, orders are stockists so being able to have that conversation with real people at the markets and realizing that wow these products are actually helping um, and it's you know they love it and yeah just being able to provide that for people is so nice so yeah just that sense of fulfillment I think yeah that's awesome so you mentioned uh, in the beginning Ash that you used to actually have your own food business so tell us a little bit about you know, you already did all the hard work in terms of creating a brand and coming up with products and all of that kind of thing. Why did you decide to go with a, a sort of already established, done for you kind of model with the Primalista license versus, you know, just doing your own thing? Uh, well, basically, I'm terrible at, um, you know, all the legality stuff, all the, the labeling like that, just I don't want to deal with it. Um, and my products, like, yeah, I went to the markets and I loved them, um, but 
I wanted something that was already already done, already established, already, you know, something that people knew about already as well. So getting into shops with a product that no one knew about because it was just my little thing was pretty daunting and then I have to go through all the proper labelling, you know, all the testing and that just, like, no, <laughs> too hard basket for me. So, yeah, something that was already already done for you really really looked appealing to me yeah so you told us that you 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 know you you start primal alternative for a while and you were a fence sitter for a for a while how long how long would you say you were on the fence for three questions in this one right How, how long would you say roughly you were on the fence for what was holding you back from getting started and what would you say to people who are on the fence at the moment Um, I don't even know how long I was stalking for. It was quite a while because I remember I had quite a few conversations with my partner being like, can you just have a look at this? Like, what do you think of this? And sort of seeking that approval, I guess. Um, But yeah, it was quite a while. And I just kept going back to the website, reading through everything. I think I booked a couple of calls with you and then um, was like, I don't know. And then, yeah, realized that actually going to do it. But um, sorry, what was the second question? um so yeah what what was holding you back like why were you on the fence why didn't you just go oh yeah I mean um I think it was um the money side for us I was a little bit concerned um but once I you know said yes to you I just knew I was going to make it happen because it it was something that I wanted to do um and I did make it happen you know I have been through that first year and I have paid it off and our family has gone on as per usual um so I just realized that you know if you want something bad enough you will make it happen so I think just that old school way of thinking of like oh you know maybe later maybe when we've got more money you know maybe then it will work but really it did work and I should have done it earlier (laughs) awesome have you got anything final question Ash have you got anything else that you'd like to add about Primal alternative, the license or the community that we haven't already covered? Um, I guess, you know, if you are sort of sitting on the fence, I think just jump in and do it. You know, if you if you do keep going back, keep reading all the stuff um, and in your heart you just know that you want to do it, I say just do it. Um, it's like I've said, it's, you know, the products are helping people and it's so nice just to know that, that, you're making someone else's life easier, Um, nourishing people and, you know, all of that sort of thing. So um, I say just go and do it. (laughs) Get on board. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you got on board, Ash, because you're absolutely gorgeous. And I'm so stoked that you're uh, also joining me on the calls team. So I need some help with the calls uh, So because there's so many of them. So Ash and Rosie (laughs) and Gita help out with the calls. So um, I don't know if you've got it available with you now, Ash, but if you do have your link, if people want to book in with you, um, Mm -hmm. just share your link in the chat. Also, Ash has got a lovely um, Instagram page, so Primal Alternative, um, sorry, at Primal Alternative by Ashley or just Ash? Uh, Primal Alternative underscore by Ashley, yeah. So definitely go and give her a follow. Can you still see me? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Can you still see me? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see you. Well, it's very exciting because the fabulous Gita has joined us. So I am going to, I've kind of quietened Gita down. (laughs) How do I get you to put your, thank you, Ash. That's so cool. I'll I'll just mute you for now. And I'm trying to get, um, trying to work out how, uh, uh, you should be able to start your video now, Gita. There she is. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm glad you joined Hello. us. Yay. Hi, Ash. How are you? Good. Sorry, I was rushing. Yeah, I was at work and then. That's That's fine. You made it. It's nice to see your face. Thanks for joining us. So I just started with Ash 
because she was here and I thought, let's get into it. So let's get into it with you, Gita. So the first question I've got for you is, um, tell me what was going on for you before you joined Primal Alternative? Like what, we, what problem were you looking to solve? Um, I, my health journey, oh, oh, yeah, my health journey started about 12 years ago, um, or even before that, 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with um, Hashimoto's and, you know, the usual weight gain that comes with it and fatigue and all that sort of a thing. Then I saw a naturopath who put me on what she she didn't call it paleo. She didn't call it grain free. She just said for eight weeks, eliminate, you know, the grains. And or, so it was basically primal way of eating. And I felt much better. And my blood works. And the main difference I saw was um, I never realized that I was reacting to gluten. And when I started introducing them back I, my joint pain was back that was the one and my blood work showed that my an antibodies for thyroid were way down so where it was eight weeks before that it was over thousand so they can't count beyond thousand it had come down to 350 so that was just with the eight week eliminating grains and dairy you know that sort of thing um and i've always wanted uh to be in the food business. I don't know why. Um, I am a special educator and um, I've always, my career has been in teaching, especially uh, special education. But um, at the back of my mind, I always wanted to do something with food. Not necessarily at that time, I did not be primal or grain free. Um, in 2005, by then, by 2015, I was fully grain-free. Um, when I say fully, 80%, you know, occasional rice and things like that. But it just, I felt better. My health, you know, was the best ever it had been. Um, in 2015, there was some restructuring happening at, uh, at work. And I just thought, okay, this is the time I need to look at... Um, this is an opportunity to change my career, which I've always wanted to do. So I did look into, at that time, I don't know if everyone had heard, it was called Paleo Cafe. It was the Paleo Cafe. I think the franchise started in Brisbane. I don't think they exist anymore. Anyway, I looked into, I seriously looked into it. I went and looked at a cafe um, and I was nearly in there, but then, my kids were much younger at that time. They were still at home and at school. Um, and I think just the, and I had no background in business. So I was literally going in blind just because I wanted to do it and I wanted a change in career. So, but, and at the same time, I did find another job and which I liked. So I went in there and I put that on the back burner till 2018. I saw your beautiful face on Instagram. And I just, I think by then it was three more years. So the kids were a little older. Most of them were at uni and, you know, I said, yes. And I was working full time. And then I was in a, um, not teaching on the ground level, but I was in the office jobs. I was an advisor for special education. So it was a pretty higher leadership role. So it wasn't like, it wasn't for financial reasons. I just wanted to, you know, do something. Um, and in those three, so 2012 was when I had done that eight-week grain-free. Uh, and then, of course, I just started reading. Uh, I had done 21-day sugar, sugar detox coaching program, you know. So I was a lot of reading and following people and things like that. So I think that's why you must have popped up in my Insta because that, that was my tribe, basically. Um, and in 2018, I had no intention of changing or, you know, doing anything different. Um, oh, no. so, so going back to when, when I was doing that eight weeks, I found it really hard to do everything from scratch. But it wasn't because it was because it was for me and it was just for me. Uh, and, of course, the kids were 
young, so they didn't, I just had to make separate things for them. So which was hard, you know, to making two meals. Um, and I, I used to now and again reflect that I, when I saw yours, or I, by then um, things had come coming up. And once before that, I had actually done a low carb sort of Atkins diet. It was, it wasn't, um, but I used to buy all these low carb bars and you know, um, which were filled at that time. I didn't know any better, so I thought I was doing really well because I used to go to these. Um, vitamin shops and you know buy the low carb uh, filled with junk so that was always at the back of my mind and when this opportunity came up I said yes this is what I want to do and the best part about it was because, like I said when I wanted to join um, by the paleo cafe franchise it was a lot of investment mm. we're talking big big dollars plus I had not like everything else, once you open the cafe, you were on your own, basically, you know. Um, and when I found you, I said, I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I straight away, I spoke to my husband later, but I booked a call with you. Um, I did mention that this is what I'm doing. I booked a call and, but I was at a stage of life that I could make the decision. I didn't have to, you know. And especially for such a small investment, like there was, it was a no brainer for me. Um, I said, I don't have to do anything. Like literally, I think I've used this word a lot. It was like a business out of a box. You just open the box, you're ready to go. Everything, um, even, I mean, at that time we had, I think 13 products or something, uh, very few. We didn't have many products when I started. It has grown, but, Again, I haven't had to do anything, you know, like the business, you're doing everything, like the everything is taken care of and I don't regret it at all. And the my why, you know, then just putting all these pieces, to, that's why I gave you the background is just thinking of only I wish, yes, low carb is good. I wish there were better low carb products at that time. You know, I may not have reached that stage where, um, uh, you know, my thyroid would have, like this was three years before that, when I was actually diagnosed with the hypothyroidism. So yeah, it just, um, and now I feel I'm still in that, like in between I have gone part-time, but I've got even a bigger role. So I'm really, uh, you know, it's a busy full-time. So when I started, I was full-time, then I went part-time with a view of slowly um, reducing my days on the on my main uh, primary job and making primary alternative my full-time. But because I work in, you know, in a field of helping others, and that's the common theme, I feel like finally I've realized that, no, I don't want to give up this because I am making a difference to the students with disabilities lives. At the same time, I, it, it's... This is, I enjoy baking, I enjoy um, following this, you know, um, primal way of living. And I wish at that time when I was doing it, there was products like Primal Alternative, which would have helped my, made my journey so much easier. So that's my why. Beautiful, thank and you. Still, and you're still here. So this is like, so Ash, Ash has been here just over a year, but you're like, we're yes. fifth year? Is this your fifth year? Fifth year, nearly five. Fifth. In November, it'll be five years, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool. So tell us about some of your like highlights of your the last five years as a primalist or some of the breakthroughs you've had. Tell us a little bit about the stockists you've had and a little bit about how your business has kind of like ebbed and flowed to, you know, like you, you were baking more and then you went more full time. And then when you were part time, you did more, but you've been able to just yes. kind of move the business to suit what's going on in the rest of your life. Yes, definitely. Um, I've just, I've always started small and I didn't really go big, not because I, uh, I couldn't, it was because I wanted to keep that balance of, you know, my full-time job and this. Um, so it's basically right now, uh, it grew, like you said, depending on, I would, so my, I started with only stockists initially, 
And even now it's mainly stockists and I've just got two stockists actually. Um, and it's with two stockists and a few direct customers, my turnover last year was 20,000. That was the sales, 20,000, like it is. And I would say on an average, I would be making a, a day and a half, if that, you know, which was, it's, it's just, it's regular. Like I've, a lot of customers are repeat customers. They, you know, direct customers, which is the margin of profit is more. Um, I've got two stockers. Even they, like I had at one time, I had five stockers, which they slowly um, reduced, especially during the COVID, a lot of them closed down. Um, my main, the stockers who I started with, she has slowed down because her cafe and she's, they're only operating two or three days a week. And, you know, it is, but I think I'm, I'm just doing my <laughs> tax returns for last year now. And, and it is, it is still, um, I think it's about 15,000 sales that is baking one day a week, literally. Um, and it, it was very easy when I wanted, I would increase it. Or if, if I didn't want, I would pull back, you know? And like I said, if I wanted, um, I could have got, I can get many more. So if you're, if anyone is out there in Sydney, we really need people <laughs> uh, because there is demand for stockists, um, for producers and customers. There is no, um, no shortage of, people inquiring about producers. But even now, like just in the last week, I had two phone calls from, they found me on the website, um, Pamarold. And I don't even have my own website or um, I don't promote it actively, but they looked up on the main website and two of them contacted me and they placed orders here. Amazing, I love that. That's so cool. So for people sitting on the fence gates, um, what would you say to them? So people who are like, who are here, they, they, they're turning up, they're amazing, they're turning up every day, they're watching so many hours of their week and going into researching this, but they're on the fence. What would you say to yes. somebody who's on the fence? I would say, like I, I heard Ash say it, just, just make, take the first step. If you have any doubts, we have the answers for you. You know, this, I think each and every one of us we all come with those doubts. I mean, like I said, I was at, I'm at a different stage of life. So I didn't, yes, I had questions. That's why I booked a call with you and you have all the answers. So if you are sitting on the fence for the, um, for the small investment, the, you will rate like, not just financial, there's so many benefits in this. And can I just tell everyone how good our whole, we call it the sisterhood and how we all support each other. We all have each other's back and, you know, everyone's there to jump, help each other. So if you, if you want like a holistic career or holistic way of earning, um, earning some money while being at home, if, especially if you have young children, it is the best thing. But take the first step. We have the answers for you. And we all have the same, you know, um, I guess, doubts and questions and uh, yeah, and, and you can make it work. Awesome. Love it. Thank you, Geeta. And yeah, I remember our, I remember our call all those years ago and, and I used to do all the calls yes. on Zoom. I was in we, a car. You were in the car, car and you were on, you're on like your, your <laughs> lunch break or your uh, yeah. coffee break. No, I was just like going into a meeting and all the others who were going into the oh. same meeting stopped and looking into the... You know, I was all animated and talking on the phone. You were getting excited. Yes. You were like, That's right. yes. and you're like, who's she talking to? Yes. It was so fun. I remember. And then we had yes. another call because you, we, at that point, I had no prime ministers in New South Wales, like none. That's and, and so yes. you were very like, who is this weirdo woman from Western Australia? So you ordered some food. I think we sent it from WA to you. And um, you were, we had a video. You were showing me it the fact that came from Melbourne, but I it came was from still Melbourne. one of them. I think grades were had already gone more or something had they happened. They were a bit tacky, like, yeah, because because it was yes, so far up. Yeah. And I sent you pictures. Is this yeah. right? I didn't even want to do that. It was my um, one of my daughters who said, 
you're going into this. Do you even know like what the products are? Do you want to chase them? I said, oh, I guess I should. <laughs> but I had said yes even before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, were, you were in. Um, and I was, I remember I was dyeing my hair. <laughs> I just remember I had yes. a henna, henna on my hair and, and yes. I had this, all this green stuff in my hair and I was talking to you on the phone. It was yes. so much fun. Was, and we've, we've had so yeah. much fun. Like we've met so many times. I've done yes. two. Oh, the uh, highlights. I forgot to tell you. Of course, it hasn't happened for the last two and a half years. But the highlights was just mating on these amazing people in the health community, you know, um, all the naturopaths and the wellness summits and even just us getting together, Joe Witten and Fuad and, you know, like it is, it's been amazing. It's just, and the very first year, I think I met you, you came here for the wellness summit in Kayama. That's right. And then we did a couple of like primalist info sessions at your house and you demonstrated some, yes. you demonstrated some food yes. toast and we put on a food yes. for all the potential primalists. It was so much fun. And yeah. Yeah. And Pete yes. Evans events you used to, um, every time That's me and Pete right. were formulating a new product together, you were the nearest. Yes. And so you'd bake for him. So lots of like, That's wow, right. you yes. didn't think that would happen, you know? Um, yes. When you and start. then Alex Stewart, you know, yeah, meeting Alex. Lot of Alex, and um, yeah, that, it's been great. It's it's just amazing. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm so glad you joined. So good, right? I've got a question. I'm going to bring um, Ash back on as well because I've got a lovely question from Jackie. Any more questions, please put them in the um, chat. I've asked the majority of the questions now. So this is like kind of like last chance, everyone. So a wonderful question from Jackie. And she says, what is your best selling point when approaching stockists as in wording? And that might be um, a good one for, well, let's, let's ask Ash first, um, if Ash can unmute and we'll get Ash on. Is that good? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So best selling point, I guess. Um, well, first of all, there's all the um, sales scripts and everything like that in our resources for you to follow um, to go into a stockist. But um, firstly, I just call and say, I'm Ash. I've got a small business on the Sunshine Coast, um, Prime Alternative. It's all grain free. And yeah, just organize to go in and meet the manager um, or someone in charge and then just, yeah, just go in and um, have your stockist brochures and it basically sells itself really. Um, that's pretty much, yeah, you just, well, obviously all the basics, grain-free, you know, go through each product. But um, yeah, I guess you just say grain-free and it sort of is like, a, oh, okay, tell us more. <laughs> Yeah, that's good to hear. That's very good to hear. And, and you know, from I've got a like a long history in sales, right from promoting my aerobics classes when I was 14. Um, even before that, selling my scrunchies at, at um, primary school. But anyway, <laughs> I've always been a serial entrepreneur. But what I find and I've sold, you know, um, recruitment solutions. So like more of a service than a product. And I've got to say a product is so much easier to sell than a service. Like just like a concept is harder than just, you know, and, and when it's a, a consumable low price point, you know, like here's some cookies, it's not that hard. But I know it sometimes can feel like it will be really hard. And yes, people will say no, like you won't, you know, you can't please all the people all the time is one of my key mottos in life. So don't even try. Um, but yeah, have you got anything else to add to that, Gita? Um the other thing I would really, um, I think Jackie asked, what's the one selling point is we have a whole, we cater to a whole range of dietary requirements, like your vegan, keto, low carb. Um, some of them are low FODMAP and grain free is the big one. And um, yeah, that's, that's my thing. And Helen, your resources are, you know, we, we got the scripts and the hows and whys of selling. So that is, that's a great resource too. Yeah. Yeah. And the brochures, I mean, like a, a lot of people think, oh, how am I going to remember all this information? But it's all in the brochure and you can just take that brochure, in with you. That's right. So if somebody says, what's the, what's the carb content or what's the wholesale, what's the markup, all of that, it's, mm -hmm. you don't, 
you don't have to keep it all in your head. You know, you, you can just yeah. you can just reference it there, um, which is which is great because then you can just be you and you just you're just you. You don't need to sort of turn into a car salesman or anything sleazy like that just to <laughs> to sell the products. So Jackie's saying thank you, which is great. All right, so now I'm going to go back to. How am I going to do this? Uh, I want to share. So Rosie did us a couple of videos. They go for like a couple of minutes, but I can't remember where they are. Uh, uh, right. Just, just bear with me a second. If anyone's got any talk amongst yourselves, <laughs> let me just try and find this. I'll be back in a minute. All right, I found her. There she is. <laughs> she was lurking at the back. Now I've lost you. Where have you gone? Uh... <laughs> we can still see you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well I didn't um, pick my nose. And really, <laughs> you can still see me. Okay, well, where have you gone? Oh, you're down here. Sorry. I, you know, some people. Oh, there I am. Um, <laughs> embarrassing. Some people have got people to do this sort of thing for them. Um but not me. Uh, okay. <laughs> not yet. Anyway. All right. So hopefully this is going to work. If see if Rosie is going to talk, let's press play. Let's see what happens. Hi everyone. It's Rosie here. I wish I could be there in person, but this will have to be the next best thing. Um, so thanks all for being at this, um, at the virtual open week. Um, I hope you've all been enjoying it and learning, you know, lots of useful inf information. Um, so I'm Rosie. I've been a Prime Minister for coming up to four and a half years. I live in Perth, WA. I live with my partner and um, my little son, who's five years old. Um, I find Prime Alternative to be um, really good in that regard because I'm able to be, I'm able to work from home, um, take him to school, pick him up every, every you know, pretty much every single day. Um, uh, Helen's given me a couple of questions to answer. Um, just in regards to how much I bake and how I manage my time. So I'll start off with the time management question. Um, it is, you know, it, it, it's a job. Um, it's something that you have to juggle around your, your other, you know, life commitments. I um, do study as well. So I um, have, I, I'm studying just part time um, and I manage prime alternative around that you know, fairly easily. Um, I do find that prime alternative is very flexible because I can, um, you know, I can take a week off the markets if I want to. Um, I can even take a week off from my stockers if I want to. Um, I, you know, as long as I communicate with them and, you know, at least a week or two in advance to give them a chance to order anything ahead. Um, I don't actually find that if I take time off from my stockers, it affects um, my income that much, um, as long as it's not, you know, too frequent. Because um, they tend to, people, my stockers will tend to stock up sort of the week before I'm having a week off or autumn or the week after. Um, so in terms of managing time, I bake, um, uh, depending on how many orders I have, but I usually bake three to four days a week. Um, I'd say three and a half. Um, in terms of my stockists, I bake for them on Sunday and Monday. So Monday is my proper bake day, but Sunday I'll, if I do have quite a few stockists and I do usually have quite a few orders. I'll usually be doing prep and maybe some baking as well on Sunday. So that can be sort of a day. Um, if I've got a lot of orders, it's a full day on Sunday and a full day on Monday. If it's just, a, um, if it's just, it's not, if it's not as many, then it's, um, then I just bake on Monday and just do prep, so, you know, a few hours prep on Sunday. Um, then I do markets as well. So I do, I have a farmer's market on a Saturday. I bake on Thursday and Friday for that. So Thursday again, it's usually um, prep and I'll make things like cookies and packet mixes and granolas ahead of time. Um, like I said, I do this sort of during school hours. Then um, after my son's home, I usually will um, have to still spend some time uh, packaging. Um, you know, you have to wait for the breads to cool. Um, then I don't know if this is just me, but I really um, appreciate the fact that I'm at home and I am able to um, sort of combine my housework and my baking sort of into one. Um, I always think that, you know, if I, if I was going out to work, if I was going, you know, to a job somewhere, I would have to come home to a messy house. Um, whereas here yeah, I'm, you know, I bake, then I quickly vacuum and, you know, tidy up the sink and clean the dishes and then I finished and, you know, the house is clean <laughs> and that's great. And um, the other thing is, you know, you can, 
if you're if you're managing a household, you can also just you know put a load of washing on here and there. Um, you know, have lunch when you want to. Um, hang the washing out, bring it in. You know, you can combine all those activities. Um, yeah, I also get to you know it's also really good that you can start work you know at sort of at a time that suits you. Um, some people prefer to bake in the evening. I personally prefer to bake sort of morning time and have it done by um, you know by school by the time school's finished. Um, you know, I can get up. I don't ever have to set my alarm. Pretty much occasionally, I, I will if I want to get you know get a head start. Um, oh, other than the markets, of course, I do have to set my alarm for that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean that's it. That's it really. Like I, I guess my day would be. I get. I wake up probably around six as a you know as an average. I usually will do some exercise in the morning. Um, I might get started with some prep or some baking or just get my son ready for school depending on what time it is. Then I'll be baking, um, tidying up, doing any housework that needs doing, um, go pick my son up from school, finish up, finish up any um, any you know, packaging that I have to do, then get dinner started and you know then it's evening time and it's family time. Um, uh, so that's a bake day. Um, yeah look it's a job you do have to juggle. Um, there'll be lots of you know, whatever other tasks you have to do. Um, I've probably said enough about that. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I love that. That's the first time I've seen that. Um, okay. All right. Stop sharing. I'm back again. Hello. Are you all still there? Good. All right. There's another one. Hang on. Which one did I just show you? Mm, I think this is the one that we haven't seen, but I'm not sure. Yeah, this one goes for two minutes. Can you still see? Can you still see Rosie or not? Yeah, you can. Oh, no. no, you can't. Uh, right. Um, I need some technical help here. Oh, is this the one? Let's hope so. Oh, what's she doing? Can you see her now? Two minutes. Can you see that? Yeah. All right, sweet, let's go. So in regards to how much I bake and um, sort of how much money I would take in. So like I said, I bake for my stockists um, once a week and I bake for the markets once a week. So in terms of my stockists, I have about uh, like 12 or 15. Some of them only order every three months or two or three months um, and they freeze the stock, which is great. And they just do a big order every, every now and then. I've got a few more stockists who order uh, weekly or fortnightly. Um, and that's good too, just, you know, it's a regular, regular sort of thing. Um, and I kind of know that that money is going to be coming in um, weekly or fortnightly. Uh, so in terms of how much I bake for my stockists, I usually, I'd say about average would be $1,000 a week um, in terms of turnover. Uh, it can be up to sort of $1,500 um, and then sometimes down to maybe 800 so, but I'd say average around one thousand to maybe twelve hundred dollars, and that's for stockists. Um, so that's um, at wholesale price. Um, and then for my markets, usually, um, sort of the minimum I would do at a market is about six hundred dollars. Um, usually, it's more like around seven fifty to eight fifty. Around Christmas time, I would make around um, uh, yeah, usually at least a thousand dollars. You know, in the markets leading up to Christmas and up to Easter as well. They both tend to be a fair bit more lucrative. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of products that I bake, I bake everything. Um, I have my favourites that I, you know, sort of push more to stockists. But um, again, like that's going to be really individual. Like you're going to figure out what what you're good at making and what you like making, and you probably want to um, push those a bit more um, uh, because you're probably, you know, if you, as long as if especially if you can be quite um, efficient with your time um, in terms of what you're making, you'll find some things you can make really, really quickly. And then obviously your hourly rates will be higher for those products. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, uh, again, I wish I could be there in person, but yeah, all the best to all of you uh, with making your decision about whether you're going to join us. Um, yeah, all the best. Awesome. How good was that? And how, how lovely does Rosie's day sound? I thought that sounded like a very lovely day. Right. Um, okay. Back to where I was. I think this is it here. Right. Yes. Okay. 
share again. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right, so uh, play from current slide. All right, so these are the questions that I have just asked uh, Gita and um, Ash and Rosie kind of, uh, nobody knew what the questions were going to be until today. So uh, well done, uh, Ash and Gita, for just going with it, flying on the seat of your pants. If there's any more questions, ask them now. Um, tomorrow, day five, is going to be the top tips for success. So um, what I would love to do before we say farewell to our uh, live primalistas is Gita and Ash, what would you say your top tips are for success? Um, let's have a look. Who wants to go first? Oh, yes, I can. Or well, Gita, how you go? <laughs> <laughs> Me? All right, I'm up. You're um, up. So five top tips. Um, I guess, all right, so be organized with your with your day um so if you've got orders coming in like prioritize what you're going to cook um but i guess um before that you obviously have to get the orders so my top tip for there would just be follow up with your stockists or potential stockists um just sort of get in their face as well send send the email send the phone calls or sorry phone call you know them and just don't feel like you're being too pushy um, because they're busy and they've got, you know, a hundred other stockers that they're dealing with and ordering. And yeah, so that would be a top tip of just get in their face and follow up and don't feel like, oh, they didn't call me. Um, they mustn't want it. They mustn't want the product. So yeah, just follow up. Um, other top tips. Um, I guess just, believe in yourself as well like it can be done um setting setting up your day um realizing what you have to do and just sort of getting it done at the start I was sort of you know doing all the little bits and oh I just have to reorganize reorganize my pantry and make sure that that's all tidy and um yeah just sort of get in there get baking and get it done as well and then yeah Perfect. Top advice. Yeah. Like that's like in my little coaching extras that I do every, every month. It's always just like, just bake, <laughs> just bake and sell. <laughs> Don't get bogged down with all the other things, you know, like the procrastination or the perfectionism, you know, like, oh, I can't do this until my pantry is just perfect. And all the tins are facing the right way. And, you know, like it's just, uh, it's not, it's not going to work. So Gita, what would you say your top tip is for uh, success as a primalista? I would, start with uh, what Ash said believe in yourself that's the main thing believe in yourself and believe in the product like be you know show your confidence in the product know your products well uh, not you know not the details of how many carbs and things but really know your products the range of products you're offering um, and the health benefits you know have a story have your why I think coming giving your personal um context to it and your belief like you have to really believe in it that's my thing uh, and be confident about it um, and the other things like you know be organized don't wait for perfect the perfect day and don't wait, wait for the perfect day to jump into like if you want if you're if you even have like you know oh maybe this will interest me obviously you are here so you this you are interested in this just make that, you know, book a call with the prime ministers or Helen and um, find out more and you can do it. Awesome. Thank you so much. So um, what do you think my top tip is for the biggest tip to go from, you know, your dream, which we outlined on Monday to actual reality? So, you know, you already set your intention on Monday. Does anybody want to have a little stab at what they think my top tip is to go from dream to reality. And like I say, we'll talk about more in depth tomorrow, top tips for success. But the, if I was going to give you one takeaway, what would it be? Any, any ideas? Oh, Jackie, very <laughs> clever. Yes, my uh, top tip is take action. 
just do it just one <laughs> thing oh Where's hello oh hello <laughs> we've got a streaker <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so my my top tip for um success is yeah just take action so remember at the start of today's session I mentioned that I was going to talk to you about this amazing mega way to save money and get started in your business well here it is so are you ready drum roll so I want to offer you I'm going to call it a fast action bonus because that's what it is right no more sitting on the fence no more watching hours and hours and hours of uh, me driveling on anymore right um, here is a really if you want an incentive to get you off the fence and over the hurdles then we are offering a zero dollar joining fee until next Friday so it's Friday the 13th <gasps> it's not a moment it's a good sign honestly um, so as you as you can see here you can either pay up front and you 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 it's just five five to get started and as you know that's the same price that it was when it first started all these years ago um, and then if if you don't want to start or you know cash flow is an issue there is a payment plan option so it's just 620 a month to get started and then it's just $120 a month after that. So it's just $20 a day in the first year. And then just $4 a day after that. Like it's just a no brainer, right? So $1,000 saving. And don't forget about these amazing bonuses that are currently on offer. Like I said to you the other day during the info session, I'm a little business. Every month we crunch the numbers. Can we still, can we still give $1,000? Um, you know, discount on the joining fee. Can we still give $1,700 worth of bonuses away? So I don't know how long these are going to be around for. Um, I know that, you know, when Gita started um, and when Ash started as well, there was no baking starter kit, was there? Chime in if I'm wrong, but there was no baking no. starter kit. Nothing. You I'm very to... jealous of that one. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. And it just mm. lands on your doorstep. You don't even have to go out and order it. So you get a primal alternative fair trade apron, like beautifully modeled by Ash and Gita today with your name and state on it. Six tins, 200 compostable cellophane bags and over, it's actually 220 personalized labels for your first few bakes, as well as all those other amazing bonuses on the screen. Now, and you know, like when Gita started, you know, like Ash has got more because uh, she's only, she's been on board just over a year, well, about 18 months now. But when Gita started, it literally was just recipes and videos. Mm -hmm. um, don't forget, there's a seven day cooling off period. I know that, you know, Gita's daughters wanted her to do a due diligence, buy some products before you jump on board with this. But look, we know these products sell. We know people buy the loaves of bread for $16.50. Um, so probably about 80% of people who joined, they haven't tried the products before, um, but kind of putting it off, getting an order, waiting. You know, your biggest enemy to taking action at this stage is time. So it's a time versus interest thing. You just kind of like need to take action and go while you're feeling excited. Um, but you can try all the recipes in the first seven days. Um, and if there's something that you don't like and you, you want to just change your mind, there is that, you know, that reassurance of the seven day cooling off guarantee as well. So as I mentioned before, this zero dollar joining fee offer ends next Friday. So let's take some action. Use code open week. So what you need to do is book your free 30 minute Primalista call. You can just go to primalalternative.com forward slash call, or you can use Ash's um, link if you'd rather just chat to Ash and Rosie's and Gita's. I'm going to share those um, when I send the replay email uh, later today, but please use the code open week. So we know you've done your research. We know that you've got this wicked offer just waiting there for you. So during the call, what we'll be doing is spending time getting clear on what you're looking for. And we'll be able to see if the Primalista license can help. And if you're a good fit for Primal Alternative, we'll recap all the details of the license with you and answer your questions. And if it's a good fit, we'll offer you the opportunity to join us. So everybody gets essentially 
interviewed before they jump on board. It's not just a click to cart um, opportunity. And that's just to make sure that, you know, we're keeping the vibe high. As you can tell from meeting Gita and Rosie and Ash today, these are incredible women that we're co-creating this amazing business together with. There's no morning minis. The vibe's very high. Everybody's there to support everybody on their journey. Would you agree with me on that one, Prime Listers? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. Awesome. All right. So we've made it to the end. Da, 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 da. Kirsty says, thanks, ladies. Yes, you're welcome. Who is going to be the winner of the yummy prize box today? I'm going to do my amazing. It's Jackie. Jackie is the winner. Woo! Well done, Jackie. And aren't you in Piri Piri, Port Piri Piri? <laughs> That's where you are, isn't it? Piri Piri sauce. So if you could um, please email me, Primal Alternative, sorry, info at primalalternative.com. That's me with your um, address and phone number. And I will put that prize in our uh, online shop group for South Australia and Northern Territory. And that will get baked for you and shipped to you in Port Piri Piri. I know it's just Port Piri, but I'm just being silly. All right. Any closing <laughs> comments from anybody before we all go and have lunch or probably dinner over East? Um, any final comments? Yeah, it was lovely to be here. And thank you for being here, Jackie and Kirsty. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much. Seriously, it's such a buzz to hang out with the Prime Listers today. And thanks to Rosie. How cool is that? That she's like, oh, I can't make it, but I'll do these videos. Like, just seriously, so grateful. So thank you, everybody. So grateful that you could all make it. And au revoir to our replay watchers. We'll see you tomorrow for the final day of the virtual open week. Bye for now.